What's up, Navigation Nation? Hope everybody's having a great week of trading. I am here with our contest winner again, Matt King. What's up, Matt? Hey, what's going on, man? It's good to be back. All right, so we uh, we got some movement in the markets today, and uh, which means that creates some opportunity as well as we need to uh, make a little adjustment in one of our positions. So you ready to ready to rock it out? Heck yeah! Let's let's make some money today. All right, so let's go to uh, let's just go over the, the the positions real quick and and take a look at what's going on. Let's start with natural gas forward slash ng. Certainly. Um, you want to look at the Analyze tab? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead to the Analyze tab. That's perfect. So you can see here we're up about 290 bucks on that trade out of a, a potential max profit of 790 We've been in this trade for about 24 days. Uh, so we, we really want to, you know, if, if we get 30 or 40% of max profit within 10 or 15 days, we'll go ahead and book those profits. But if it lingers on, we, we want to go ahead and wait for 50% of max profit. So in this case, let's just let this one sit, try to collect a little bit more theta, let these options decay a little bit more, and try to book a little bit more profit. Sounds like a deal to me. And then let's go ahead, let's skip over NQ, let's go to ZB. Okay. This is our bond position, if you can stretch that graph out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, to see if we can... Get a little bit better idea where we're at on this one. And if you hover over where price is currently trading, you can see we're up about 130 bucks. So uh, looking for looking for more profit in that one. So nothing to do in the bonds at this point either. Yep. And then click on XRT. So XRT, you can see price is still well within our range. We're down 139 bucks, but nothing to do. No adjustments needed, uh, nothing to do in XRT. So we're just looking for a little bit more of an up move and some more time to pass before we manage or do anything in XRT. Okay, got it. So let's go ahead and go to NQ. NQ is our little problem child that we need to deal with today. <laughs> It's kind of the, uh, you know, everybody, you know, if you've got multiple kids, you know that, you know, there's always a, there's always a bad one that, that you got to uh, <laughs> bend over and, and take out to the woodshed every once in a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice analogy. Not. I yeah, like that. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's, maybe that's <laughs> not where I should have went with that. But um, anyway, so we've got, we've got NQ. We've got two different positions on in the NASDAQ. The one that you've clicked on here that you've got showing, you can see price has, has breached our upside short call. So our short call is at 61.80, where that dotted line is, where you've got your mouse, perfect. And you can see price has, has blown through that. Not, not quite to our break-even point, but as, as the way that we mechanically adjust these strangles is to help reduce risk and, and to help just manage the overall position, is we're at a point now where, yeah, this trade is down about 960 bucks, but it's still, you know, it hasn't blown through our break even at all. So a lot of people will adjust once it hits the break even. I like to adjust a little bit earlier once it has breached that short call. And so in this case, it's it's breached our short call. So we are going to make the necessary adjustment. So what we want to do is essentially the the mechanically uh, the mechanical way that we adjust these is once it breaches that short call we roll the untested side closer to where price is, okay? So essentially what we're doing is we've got this 5,700 put. So go ahead and go down below and click off that 6,180 call. Oh, oh it's doing that thing again. Yeah, yeah go ahead and reset it. This is a little quirky thing with toss. So... Go ahead and uncheck everything except for that 5,700 put. Except for that one. There you go. So what you'll notice here is, and the reason we make this adjustment is, price is currently you know 62, 24, 50. So if you hover over where price is currently trading, you can see that just on this put piece, we're we're already at almost max profit, meaning that put is not really. There's, there's not much more value we can get out of that. The only thing that can happen if the NASDAQ you know, goes down really quick is we could start losing money on that piece, okay? So 
so there's no reason to hold on to that. We might as well just book the, the, the profit that's in that piece. Now remember, we're still down on the trade overall, but on this, just this put piece, we want to we want to get out of that because we can just book that and uh, and 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 roll that closer to price to collect another credit. So essentially, what we're going to do is just go ahead and right click down below on that fifty seven hundred put, and with futures, yeah, go ahead and right click on that and create closing order. So with with futures, we have to close the, we have to close out the piece and then reopen it. Essentially, that's how we roll. If this were a stock or an ETF, we could actually roll this position all in one transaction. But with futures, TOS does not have that functionality at this point. So, so there you go. So let's go ahead and kick that price down to five point five zero, and hit confirm and send. Send. I am done. And we got filled. Okay, so now we're we're out of that piece. So now the second part of that roll is we want to re-enter a new put closer to where price is. So let's go to the trade tab. Okay, okay. good. This, this is going to be a good lesson. So you can see now we've got 18 days left to expiration. So in this case. I don't want to open a new position with 18 days left to expiration. That's too short of a time frame. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and open that new put with 46 days to expiration and get back in our wheelhouse of where we like to enter trades, kind of in that 30 to 60 day range. So if you scroll down and, and when we, when we roll, when we close out one side and we want to roll it closer to price, you know, the next question that the people have is, okay, well, how close or, you know, which one, which one do we roll to? So scroll up a little bit. We're going to go over to our put side. Scroll up just a little more. There you go. A little more. There you go. So what I, what I like to do to stay mechanical is I like to roll up to about the 30 delta. Okay. Okay. So there's your 30 delta. So so essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to reopen. We're going to sell a 60-60 put. And so to do that, just simply right click where you're at. Sell and you're going to sell a single in this case. Oh, okay. All right. So we're on the we're already on the put side, so it knows we're selling a put and so we're just going to sell a single put. And so go ahead and click that price up to, let's say, 66.75. See if we okay. can see if we can fill there. Okay. And confirm. And send. Should we have analyzed that before putting that in? Um. You, you can, absolutely you can. Uh, in this case, I just wanted to go ahead and get it filled and then we can look at it on the Analyze tab. Okay. So go ahead and Analyze. And so the, the one other thing you'll, you'll notice, so go ahead and click on your, um, yeah, pull that up for me. Normally it gives me a little I know, something. Uh, they need to... There's finicky today. <laughs> yeah, there's a little finicky things with toss sometimes. Okay, so what you'll see right. is now down below, you see you've got your your three different positions that on that are in the November cycle, the ones that are not checked right now, mm -hmm. and then you've got your one that's checked that is in December. So that's the one we just entered. This one is that the one down here in the bottom here. Yeah, and and if you if you go over to where the column that says symbol, right there, okay. it's try, you can widen out that column so that you can see you can start to see it's um, down below. You can see it says November and then December. You can barely see it there. Oh, I, I see what you're saying though. Yeah, it's being. Yeah, and that that's okay. We can <laughs> it first. I, th I thought you could widen those columns. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. So um, anyway, so it you can see they're November, one's December, 
And, and so go ahead and go over to your left hand current account list and click on the NQ over there. This one right here? Yep. Okay. And then, and, and so we're, we're, we're still on there. So this gives us, so then if you click on the uncheck the 5700 put, because it's zeroed out anyway, right there and then click on the uh, 6180 call. So this is what our new graph looks like for this position. Crazy looking. Yeah, a little goofy. So the, the thing you gotta remember is it, now, that you're, now that you've made an adjustment, Toss has wiped out that little profit that we took in the, on the put side. So this graph doesn't take into account that piece that we've already taken off as a profit. So it's showing we're down $1,600, but we're actually only down on the position about 900 because it, it didn't, you know, that, that piece that we already closed out, that's closed out. So it's not going to show that in our graph. Gotcha. Okay. So that's just something to remember after you adjust, you have to kind of have a, you know, you have to be able to remember kind of what we, what we already took off. And, it, and it's not that you have to, write it down or remember, I mean, it's all here in the platform. For example, if you go to the monitor tab. Okay. And then there, now, now we can see all the position, all the trades that we've made in the NQ. So we, we put that very first strangle on, on the 2nd of October. We put on another strangle on the 18th. And then the two bottom trades are the ones we just did today, which is 1030, where we bought back that 5,700 put and we sold out the 6060 put. Okay. This is the one where we added a uh, what was it last week maybe or uh, that would have been about right where we added another strangle. Yeah, on the 18th. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. So, so that's how you that's how you adjust a strangle. So, I know it you know it, it's actually a little bit easier when you're dealing with stocks and ETFs cuz you can just do that roll with with one transaction. Uh, in this case, we had to do it as two separate trades. We had to buy back the 5700 and then resell the 6060. But that is how you adjust. So we're collecting another big credit of $67. And so now we just need you know, time to decay. We can still use a little bit of down movement in the NASDAQ to benefit that piece. Uh, and we'll just continue to, to monitor, and man, uh, monitor and manage. Now, the way that I do this, you know, we've added two positions on. Uh, we've still got thirty over thirty-one thousand dollars in available funds for trading, so again, IV is still pretty low across the board. So I don't, I don't want to just, I don't want to max out our positions in case it spikes up, and we want to have some, some cash on hand to to enter some more positions. But I would like to put on one more. Does that sound okay with you? Yeah, I'm all right with that. We've got a little bit of pop in implied volatility day because because stocks except for the NASDAQ, uh, stocks are down a bit. And so one that we were kind of looking at was EEM. So we've got, we've got positions on in natural gas. We've got positions on in the NASDAQ, which are primarily tech stocks. We've got a position on in bonds. We've got a position on in XRT, which is a, a retail ETF. So that's an ETF that tracks some of the major, the big retail stores. And now we can put on a position to kind of further our diversification that's not too correlated to anything else with EEM. And so EEM is an ETF that tracks emerging markets. So this is international stocks in, in countries like Thailand and Brazil and um, you know, some of your other Malaysia, some of your other emerging type markets, not your developed markets like uh, France and Germany, but you're developing, you know, your your markets that are still emerging and, and uh, a little bit smaller. So that's what EEM, EEM tracks. Okay, it's good to know. So we can see IV percentiles at 67. So that's popped up nicely today, giving a little bit more yeah, juice nice. to the options in, in EEM. So let's go ahead and go to the trade tab and see what we're working with. I got a good one right there around uh, 46 days. Perfect. Looks like. Wait, there it is. Got to hit that. And we'll just scroll down a little bit. 
So you can see the open interest in these options. I mean, there's tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of, of contracts traded. So very, very liquid. You can see that the, between the bid and the ask, the, the strikes are, uh, or the, the bid and the ask is, you know, one point wide, penny point wide. You can't really ask for anything better than that. As far 24, as 25, 37, yeah. 38. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and put on a strangle in EEM. How's uh, 19 sound? Sound like a, a good yeah, place? Yeah, exactly. We don't want to go to 14. To me, that's just too far away. You're not collecting enough. You've got 15, 16 cents in there. The night, you know, the 26 you could do, but it's it's getting a little bit closer. So I, I would exactly, I'd go with the 19. All right. Let's do this here. Sell, strangle. And then we'll come over here, take a look for... Uh, we're not too far off. Kind of in the same area as probably 21. Uh, Delta strike of 43.5. Yep. That's the right side. 43.5. And... Very good. I don't even have and, to. I don't even have to say anything anymore. You just you're on it. Yeah, sometimes I do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna do? Set the. Set the right one. That was the right one, wasn't? It? Yep. Set. Yeah, there it is. Set slices to break even by the date, and it shows us up at about sixty-seven percent total potential profit. Perfect. And it uh, looks like a good place. Looks like a good place for us. Yeah, so we've got, you know, $62 is our max profit with one contract. So this is kind of similar to the one we talked about in our last lesson on XRT, where, you know, it's only trading at $45, $46. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to have a ton of, of juice in those, in those options cause just because it's such a low price. So let's go ahead and kick this up to kind of something similar to we did in XRT. Let's kick it up to 10 contracts. I was just say I think we did ten on that one, so that would put us at a max profit six twenty. Yep. So not not too horribly risky. So it looks like a good place to be, and then uh, as long as you're good with that, we can do Let's that. ship it. All right, where to go? Confirm and send. Buying power seven thousand. So we have plenty, plenty of uh, plenty of cash. I, didn't, yeah. I should have put the price down a little bit, but yeah, no, that's okay. We can go in and adjust it, but yeah, seven thousand. I mean, that, that, it does take a lot of buying power in EEM, but mm -hmm. uh, but we we have it, you know. So you know, now if you look up at your upper left hand corner, you can see we're after that goes through, we'll only have about twenty four thousand. So we're at about fifty percent of um, of our of our current account value. So we're we're right where we. We want to be. Um, go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and adjust that. Try to get filled. Okay, so it's this one that's working, right? Yep. And then uh, cancel, replace. Uh, yeah, let's just keep it at sixty-one. We should get filled at sixty-one cents. Think so. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how good I am. Right on. Yeah, so all right, Co. So we're in the trade. We're good to go. Okay. And now we got uh, we got now we got five positions on. So that's really the max that I wanted to do for this for these lessons is you know I didn't I don't want to have ten or twelve. So we're having to jump on here every every day and make adjustments and, and trades and things like that. But you know I think five is a good number. We've got we've got a good diversification in symbols that are that are fairly uncorrelated. So I think we're good to go. Yeah, it looks looks good to me. It looks like we're doing uh, overall. It looks like we're doing uh, all right at this point. So yeah, I mean, we started with we started with fifty grand, and we were up to you know I think we had a high point of where we were up at you know fifty one, you know we were up about fifteen hundred bucks or so, and then Nasdaq has had just this huge move on Friday and today, so that's that's taken away some of that um, some of that profit at this point. But we've got more positions on now, so. 
as uh, as these options decay and as we move closer to their expiration dates, we'll see that we'll see that theta come back into our account. I like it. I like where it's going. So, all right. All right. Sounds good. Well, we will sign off from here. And uh, thanks, everybody, for viewing. And we'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you.